there's an extraordinary allure found in hunting desert mule deer bucks. And it brings me to the rocky sagebrush landscapes found in Eastern Oregon. Having used six years worth of preference points, my anticipation for this hunt is undeniable. But like any public land do-it-yourself hunt, there are other hunters that are also here for the same opportunity. My plan, it's to stick to tradition and hunt using my feet and the aid of good mules to go deeper and farther off grid with the hopes of turning up a good buck. I feel very blessed. Completely pushed out right now. We've been climbing all day. I did so hard. And this bull just kept escaping us. The rewards in the journey, and this has been an unbelievable journey so far. Kind of ironic because our plan this morning was to hike up and hunt this ridge top in front of me. I've been up here for a couple of days doing some scouting and I was clear off in the valley down below earlier this week and I glassed up four bucks on the skyline up on this rim and there was already another guy posted up on it and so we backed out when I talked to him. Me and about 20 other tags are hunting the same deer, I think. Uh, here's, we've had a uh, half dozen ATVs this morning kind of surround us, so I'm gonna try to hit some spots that an ATV can't go, because we've got mules and I'm willing to work for it, and hopefully they'll push all these deer off these flats into these cliffs, and I'll be able to turn up a nice buck. Hunting public lands, we have to respect each other because we all own the land, which for me meant making a change in my hunting plans. big buck country. This is the epitome of it. I've got wide open sagebrush flats out to my left. Rim rock faces, water. Off this side, big, steep, thick mahogany thickets. There's ATVs running all over the sagebrush right now. This is a great refuge for these bucks. You got something behind your eyes, way you it's a cheap disguise We were made To chase the light But you got saved On a moonless night
260 yards. Just uh, had two bucks run out in front of me. Uh, they were moving pretty good, so didn't have time to get set up on them, watch them go over the skyline. So just, you go from finding absolutely nothing to, <laughs> there's your deer. The bucks had vanished over the horizon, and after days, and miles of searching, I grew disheartened when both myself and Robbie couldn't turn up a buck. Not being able to relocate the deer left me running short on time and struggling with what to do. I had to make a decision. Do I stay and keep looking for the bucks? Or make a move to the unknown and venture into a new area? I chose to make a move. We got... A buck, three bucks. Yes, yes, thank you, God. <laughs> three bucks, seven days, three bucks. So it's a fork, small fork with a little tiny third. The left one's a little fork and horn. like Christmas, I've been out here seven days. <laughs> Finally found deer. I'm like, hardest deer in my life. Right here, you're looking at it. <laughs> He's a four by four, not a huge buck. Uh, we're gonna make a play on him and hopefully it works out. And if it doesn't, I'll keep hunting, but I'm certainly not, uh, not gonna pass up this opportunity on this deer. I literally just walked right into that deer and uh, I wasn't expecting him to be there and he wasn't expecting to see me and he gone. Out here, things happen fast and it's never a good feeling when you have a missed opportunity on a buck. All I can do is keep hunting with the hopes of turning my luck around. Oh yeah, the one's a nice one. He's heavier. Yeah, he's a much better buck, okay. 578. This buck just skirted us. So we're gonna try to make a move. The deer are feeding up and to the left. So we're gonna move up and to the left try to get a vantage point again. Got to be really careful in how we move because there's only one buck I want to shoot. They're 
Aite. of deer. I don't know how we pulled this off. I was prepared to take a shot on this buck at 550 yards and he sunk down into this drainage and the wind is ripping and the deer started coming into these trees and bedding down and we literally had to sneak through here. I don't even know how many eyeballs were on us and I had a 150 yard shot on that buck. It's got to be a 15 to 20 mile an hour wind right now. My reticle was tough to control but we got it done. It's so awesome when it comes together. Unbelievable. This is a great deer. I can't believe this. I have been out here for three days of scouting and four days of hunting. And this is a gorgeous Oregon buck. Public land. I. There's a couple times, man, I just, I never thought it was gonna happen. It was so frustrating. It was so hard to find the deer. And just to have it come together like this on a buck like this, it's a beautiful, perfect buck. I worked so hard for this deer. I used six years worth of points for this moment and I could not be more thrilled. And I, I just am so thankful right now. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> He's beautiful. eight o'clock got it quartered and I got half the deer on me Nick my camera guy has half the deer on him it's gonna be a long night but a good one triumphant <laughs> heavy packs never felt so good We packed the deer out of the worst part. Robbie's got his mules in camp, so I'm spent. We have another I have two and a half miles, three miles back to camp. So instead of being ignorant, we're gonna drop our packs here and come back in the morning with the mules and let them do the rest of the work for us. It's uh, We left at eight and I think it's about 11 o'clock right now. So we got three hours and probably another, at that at this pace, three hours to go. So it's just smarter to drop them and we'll come back tomorrow. For me, the tradition of using mules goes back over 30 years. And there isn't a more beautiful sight than watching a pack string move across the landscapes. Packing out my harvest the way that my family and friends always have, on the mules.
this is the perfect ending to my hunt for an Oregon desert mule deer.